Well, hello everybody. Tate Davis here. Hiya. Uh, with another album review for you. What album are we going to be reviewing today? The Knack. Get The Knack from 1979, their debut album. Uh, what to say about this album that hasn't already been said? It's a power pop classic. Uh, one of Kurt Cobain's favorite albums of all time. Uh, the Knack were a, uh, uh, an L.A. band who uh, became very, very popular as a live band. They were hugely energetic. Doug Figer was had this amazing on-stage charisma as a front man. You know, smiling behind the mic, eyes all wide open, singing songs about banging teenage girls and stuff like that. Just a great band. Even jammed with the likes of Ray Manzarek and Bruce Springsteen. Ben Montent, people like that. Wind up getting a record deal with Capitol Records in uh, 79 and went in the studio to record uh, to record this album. And it was recorded at Capitol's uh, I don't know where this was recorded at. It doesn't say right here in the notes. I think maybe the record plant maybe it was recorded. I don't know. One of you can tell me in the comment section below. But, uh, the lineup here, we got Doug Figer on rhythm guitar and lead vocals, Burton Ever on lead guitar, Bruce Gary on drums, Prescott Niles on bass, here's the guys in the band right here, Bruce Gary, one of the unsung power pop drummers of all time, he's amazing, It's the front cover right there in case you didn't see it, and on the inside, Over here. Let's go this back in here. So why don't we go ahead and get to the songs here? Why don't we? So side one tracking that ah, side one track one. We begin the album with "Let Me Out." Come on, get it out, baby. Let me out. Great two and a half minute power pop anthem to, to begin the next career off. Some awesome drumming by Bruce Gary in this one. Uh, I think I remember watching a Knack documentary from 2004 or something like that on YouTube and uh, Bruce Gary said that his drum part for the song was uh, him trying to be Buddy Rich in a rock and roll band. And you can clearly tell with all of the um, all of the amazing fills that he does. Bruce, Bruce is Probably Bruce's best drumming performance on the on the entire album from a technique perspective. Just amazing. And it fits. Your number, your name. Great kind of mid-tempo hard rocker. Great vocals, great vocals by Doug and great guitar solo by Burton in this one. Oterra. Originally written by Doug, I believe, when he uh, um, was in a band called Sky. Or one of his old bands had, he said in the documentary, uh, there was an... Um, a really, really hot roadie named Tara, who uh, who one of the other bands had been, who had employed, and uh, he was just smitten by her, and he wrote the song, and it's a great song. Uh, great, great guitar solo by uh, Bert Navarre, and then great drumming by Bruce Gary. She's so selfish. Great drum intro by Bruce Gary in this one flows really well. Doug's vocals are great. She's so selfish. Great, great song. Maybe tonight, kind of the week, maybe the weakest song on side two, or on side one rather. Uh, kind of a ballad type thing, uh, a way to slow the mood down a bit. I like it. It's pretty good. And then closing off side one, we got Good Girls Don't. The uh, the other probably the next second most well known song and the the second big hit from this album great song extraordinary drumming by Bruce Gary good girls don't naughty lyrics by Mr Doug Figer I love it a lot side two track one we open up with the the amazing a song that needs very little introduction the classic one of the greatest songs of all time. The number one song of 1979 that made a comeback with the uh, Reality Bites soundtrack, I Sharona. Written 
by Doug Figer and Bert Navarre uh, as a uh, taking inspiration from a, a hot girl who Doug was friends with named Sharona Alpern. Is that he, she's actually on the cover of uh, the uh, next next album, but the little girls understand. Um, uh, great song, great Bruce Gary drum intro to start off the whole thing. Great, great guitar solo by uh, Burton. I love it a lot. It's classic for a reason. Side two, track two, we got a cover of a Buddy Holly song called Heartbeat. I love it. Great drumming by Bruce Gary on this one. It's not very long. Da -da 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 -da. Very up tempo and energetic. Side two, track three, kind of a weird tune. Siamese Twins, The Monkey and Me. Uh, kind of dark, actually. Um, but I like it. Great tune. Great vocals by Doug in that. Side two, track four. Lucinda. Very slow song. A great song. Uh, probably one of my favorite songs on the album. Uh, I love Lucinda. Great, great ballady kind of tune. Uh, side two, track five, the penultimate song on the album. That's what the little girls do. Kind of a three minute power pop type song. That's what the little girls do to you. That's what the little girls do. Great song. Great, very catchy. Love it. And then side two, track six, finishing off the album. We got Frustrated with a uh, really cool guitar riff. Really catchy riff. Great vocals by Doug. Uh, yeah, great. Uh, yeah, the bass line on uh, this song by Prescott Niles is really nice. Great bass playing on this one by Prescott. So, that's The Knack. Get The Knack from 1979. Uh, a very strong contender for uh, one of the greatest debut power pop albums of all time. I'd highly recommend it to anybody who wants to get into, knack, get into The Knack for the first time. Their follow-up albums... Uh, but the little girls understand, and Ron Tripp are also very good, although they didn't sell quite as near the amount as uh, as this one. There was a whole backlash at, 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 um, after this album came out, um, where the band members would refuse to do interviews. And since the Beatles look, since the album looks album cover looks a lot like that of uh, Meet the Beatles, they accused them of being Beatles ripoffs, and they thought of them as being arrogant. So someone started a nuke the neck campaign. And then their uh, resulting albums didn't really sell very well. Um, and then they also put out a few albums in the 90s and into the 2000s, which are pretty good. But for for uh, first-time fans, start with this one, then go to uh, But the Little Girls Understand, and then Round Trip. So with that in mind, thank you guys very much for watching this video, and stay tuned for more stuff in the future. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.